okay? Uh, I guess we should say, this the way it's worded, it's more about the time required for the process. Does it take a lot of time, or does it take only a little bit of time? Um, a process will occur if it's spontaneous. Like if I take an ice cube and put it on the table, it will melt. I don't need to do anything. It'll just melt. If I put an iron nail outside, it will rust. I don't have to do anything. It'll just rust. Um, you don't see rust turning back into oxygen and iron. That doesn't occur spontaneously. So some things occur spontaneously without any outside intervention. And again, they could be slow or fast. There's really two things that will determine if a process will be spontaneous. Number one is the delta H. Number one is your enthalpy. Most spontaneous processes are exothermic. They release heat. That kind of makes sense. If you have to put a lot of heat into a process to make it happen, chances are it won't occur all by itself, right? So uh, uh, exothermic reactions favor spontaneity. That doesn't mean you have to be exothermic to be spontaneous. But most spontaneous processes are exothermic. Think about that ice cube I just told you about. If I put an ice cube on the table and it melts, solids and liquids going up that heating curve, that's endothermic, but it doesn't. It absorbs heat and it melts spontaneously at this temperature because there is another driving process for that spontaneity, and that is an increase in entropy, okay? Delta S is entropy. Do you guys remember what entropy is from last year? Disorder. Disorder. There is a tendency in nature to become less ordered. Um, tell you is this. If in a process, if a process is both exothermic, right, delta H is negative, and the entropy is going up, delta S is positive, that process will absolutely always be always be spontaneous. So again, if it releases heat and it's increasing disorder, the process is always spontaneous. Absolutely always. Okay? If neither of those factors are true, if the reaction is endothermic and the entropy is going down, it will never be spontaneous. It won't ever, ever be spontaneous. No matter what the temperature is, it'll never be spontaneous. And if only one of those factors is true, it'll be spontaneous sometimes. That sometimes depends on the temperature that we're at, okay? So if both of these are true, if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, the process is always spontaneous. If one of them is true, spontaneity depends on temperature, and if neither is true, never spontaneous. We're going to get to that later in section four, but I figured while we're talking about spontaneity, we might as well talk about what determines it, right? Those two things determine it. Entropy, which is given, or the change in entropy is S, but we often don't talk about the entropy of one thing. We talk about how one thing's entropy changes. For example, the ice cube's entropy. You go from solid to liquid. The disorder of the molecules increases because solid, they're very ordered. Liquid, they're less ordered. So we talk about more so the change in entropy, okay? is really a measure of molecular randomness or disorder, okay? It describes the number of arrangements or states available to a system. The more arrangements or states, the greater the entropy. Okay, think about um, the gases. Think about even when you mix a solution. 
right? If you have water and you put salt in it, the entropy goes up. Right? Because now there's more than one thing. There's more arrangements of the molecules. It's not just water molecules in a container. There's more than one thing. So the more possibilities there are for a molecule, the more places it can be in, even larger molecules have greater entropy. A greater volume of a gas means greater entropy, right? Because there's more places the gas molecules can be. If there's more, we call it positional probability. If there's more positional probability or more arrangements, more possibilities for the molecules to exist in, the greater the entropy can be, will be. So that being said, the phase, the phase with the most entropy is gas. And the phase with the least entropy is solid. And liquid and aqueous are in the middle. Actually, aqueous is really next because that's more than one thing. So greater um, arrangements. And then liquid comes before solid. Okay, so for if this is decreasing order of entropy, the gas phase has the most, then the aqueous, then the liquid, then the solid. <laughs> Hi, can I have six cookies and a coffee to room 231, please? Yeah. Uh, no, we don't need change. Thank you. Oh, thank God. Time for coffee. <laughs> All right. Questions so far? Yes. Yes, go. Delta S. Where is it? Oh, wait. I think it's down here. The change in entropy of the system is represented by the symbol delta S. Okay? And in, you will see that we use this little a delta S degree um, for most of this chapter because when we examine these systems, they're at the standard state. Okay? Okay. Um, we learned about the first law of thermodynamics in chapter 6, and that was that the energy of the universe is constant. Uh, now it is time for the second law of thermodynamics, which doesn't deal with energy or enthalpy. It deals with um, disorder or entropy. I forgot what it dealt with. There's a third law, too, so I wanted to make sure it wasn't the third law. The second law of thermodynamics states that the energy entropy, the disorder of the universe is constantly increasing. Hence, that is the reason, right Bryce, why you should not clean your room. Right? It's really just a matter, and, and, and I, I would not recommend that you use it because your mother or father may slap you. But, but, but if you're feeling rather frisky one day, um, and they tell you to clean your room, you should say, you know what, I really don't think I should have to clean my room because it violates the second law of thermodynamics. And then they will look at you if they don't slap you and ask you, what is the second law of thermodynamics? So you have to say, the second law of thermodynamics states that the disorder of the universe is increasing. There's only one way for things to be ordered. There's only one way for my room to be clean. My socks have to be in my sock drawer, my bed has to be made, my sheet has to be tucked in, my dresser has to be like this, whatever the case may be. But there are an infinite number of ways for it to be disorder. And so because there is more probability, there are more possible arrangements of disorder than there are order, it's just going to get messed up anyway. Right? That's really what the second law of thermodynamics states, is that the disorder is increasing. You cannot fight it. You can clean it, you can order it, right? But, but what's gonna happen in a day? If it's my house, it's like five minutes. I order it and then five minutes later, it's disordered. You know, there were seven balloon animals on the dining room table with a multitude of balloons on the floor. I woke up this morning, I went downstairs, my dog got into my pantry again, even though it has a lock so that she cannot. The kids do not put the lock on the thing. She got the cocoa. Like, 
the Hershey's Raw Bitter Unsweetened Cocoa. I really, she deserves it. That is terrible. I had to clean cocoa. Do you know what cocoa looks like on your floor at 6 a.m.? Everywhere, cocoa powder. A lot of disorder in my house this morning. Not happy. So you can either go crazy trying to fight it, trying to fight the disorder, or just roll with it. I've come to accept the second law of thermodynamics in my life. I don't, I just, I really don't know what else I can do. It's just crazy, okay? So the entropy, we just talked about entropy of the universe. That is the second law of thermodynamics and that it increases. And so we have a symbol for the entropy of the universe. It's delta S unit, which stands for entropy of the universe, delta S unit. And what delta S of the universe is really equal to is the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings. Okay, while we're here, I want to tell you that the delta S of the system is really determined by, and we're going to get into it in section five, I think, but delta S of the system is really determined by what phase to what phase you're going to, like the ice cube melting, right? The ice cube is a cell system. The entropy would be going up because you're going from solid, which is super ordered, to liquid, which is like ballroom dancing, okay? So if, you're, if the phases are changing, even in a reaction, if you have one mole of gas on the left and five moles of gas on the right, the delta S of the system is going up. Entropy is increasing because you're generating more gas in that reaction. And more gas means greater positional probability, which means greater disorder, right? Here, there, 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 the molecules are flying all over the place. So delta S of the system is really determined by the phases of the things in the system and the phase changes that they're undergoing during the reaction or if it's just a physical change, during the physical change, okay? Delta S of the surrounding. So I don't know, how do we, I want to write that. Do we say this is determined by phases or phase changes during processes? You will be predicting what happens to delta S of the system given a number of systems. I forgot what I said, but something like that. It's determined by phase changes in the process. Delta S of the surroundings is not determined by the phase changes. It's determined by heat gained and loss. So really, if the reaction is endo or exothermic, that, de that determines delta S of the surroundings. We have a line of the um, Why don't any of you that were getting cookies come and get your cookies? We had six cookies and a coffee. It should be $7, right? Yeah. Okay. The entropy of the room is increasing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so delta S of the surroundings is determined by heat gained and loss. And what I'm, and again, we're going to get into this, but it's kind of nice to have an overview right at the beginning so that you have the big picture before we start getting into the nitty gritty. If the, if the process, whatever we're talking about, is exothermic, if delta H is negative, right, meaning the process is exothermic, then where does that heat go? And guess what it's used to do? Incre heat up or increase the entropy of the surroundings. Oh, heating it up increases the molecular motion, right? The more motion you have, the greater entropy is, right? That's it. That you can tell. Is my entropy crazy right now? I'm completely random. It's really disordered. So, so if a process is exothermic and delta H is negative, then what that means is delta S of the surroundings goes up. 
Because that heat goes to the surroundings to increase their motion and increase their disorder. However, if the process is endothermic, then heat gets absorbed from the surroundings. And so the surroundings will have less energy, and the delta S will go down, go down of the surroundings. OK? Questions? So we, we some, when we talk about delta S of the universe, it's really a combination of delta S of the system and delta S of the surroundings. And a uh, spontaneous process, the delta S of the surrounding, delta S of the universe will always be positive, okay? The entropy of the universe is constantly increasing, which means this is positive. The delta S of the universe is constantly increasing. That's the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so if entropy of the universe is increasing and positive, then the process will be spontaneous as written. If the entropy of the universe is decreasing, then that process is not spontaneous. And if the entropy of the universe is zero, that means we have self-destructed. And no, it means that we're at equilibrium. But doesn't it sound like if the entropy of the universe is zero? It sounds like some catastrophic event. No, it just means that we're at equilibrium. You know, the processes are occurring. They say there's no tendency for the process to happen because it doesn't really look like anything's happening. Okay. So, we talked all about that, that entropy of the, um, of the universe, but now we're going to talk about the entropy of the system. And since the boys really wanted to use the, the acetate sheets, will you grab an acetate sheet and a marker, please? Yeah. Marker, dry erase marker. Well, they were in a box. I don't know where they went. It's over there. And there's more acetate sheets up here around the room. <laughs> undergoes sublimation. So just draw an arrow on your board and then we'll hold them up in, oh, okay, I'll give you 30 seconds. Don't cheat, don't look at your neighbor. Okay, 10 seconds. Also, make sure as you write your answers and we confirm them, you jot them down in your notes. Three, two, one, hold them up. Up, 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 up. Increases is correct. Very good. Sublimation is going directly from the solid phase to the gas phase. The gas phase has the least entropy, so you're in. Excuse me, the gas phase has the least order, the most entropy, so you're increasing the entropy there. 